Hello, my name is Ian Small. I'm a plant pathologist with the University of Florida. And today what I'm going to talk to you about are some common cotton diseases and their management. So I'm going to uh, first start by showing you some of the common cotton folia diseases and then show you how to distinguish them from each other. One common disease that we often see here in Florida is anthracnose leaf spot. And you can see it here defined with these purple margins and it often has a white or, or ash colored center to, to, the, to the lesions when they are small. And this is a member of what we refer to as a leaf spot complex. And that complex in, includes anthracnose leaf spot, cercospora leaf spot, stemphilium leaf spot, and depending on where you are in the country, it might include alternaria leaf spot. We don't see that much alternaria leaf spot here. One of the members of the leaf spot complex that I mentioned is Cercospora leaf spot. So what you see here in this picture is actually uh, this lesion here is a Cercospora leaf spot. And you can, uh, this was done, uh, this diagnosis was done by Dr. Fanny Iriati at the NFREC, Plant Disease Diagnostic Lab. And there is this reddish color and they can be concentric rings, which may make it confusing with, uh, with target spot lesions, but the center of this, this uh, leaf spot here can become whitish or a light color as the, this lesion expands. Now, a few important points to look out for with this leaf spot complex is that the, whether it's caused by a cercospora or it's an anthracnose leaf spot or stemphilium leaf spot, you will often find these diseases or the, the leaf spots developing throughout the cotton canopy and even up into the upper parts of the canopy uh, of, the, of the plants, which is different from target spot, which I'll discuss later in the presentation. An important point about the leaf spot complex is that it's often found associated with stress and particular nutrient deficiency. Like for example, in this case, potassium deficiency, which you can see clearly on these leaves here. Now this leaf spot complex can lead to premature defoliation, but it's unlikely that fungicide applications are going to have an economical return on investment. The next disease I'd like to describe to you is areolate mildew, also known as ramularia. And this disease is characterized by this white sporulation that you might see on the underside of a leaf surface. On the upper side of the leaf surface, it can turn the leaf a purple type color, but that that may depend on the variety. Uh, this is typically a late season disease, but in Florida it can have an earlier onset and lead to significant defoliation. <clears throat> so it, it is possible to manage this with one to two fungicide applications in mid-season if you see that early onset occurring. Here is a really good example of areolate mildew. This leaves and it's actually it throughout the canopy mixed in with the uh, anthracnose on the underside of this leaf you see the sporulation on that in a more severe stage it starts to look like this one important disease that you should be able to identify is target spot of cotton caused by cornespora cassiocola this picture here shows you actually lesions at different stages of development. So what's important to see is on all the lesions, one important characteristic to look for are these concentric rings, which is the reason why it gets that name target spot. When they're growing very rapidly, you can sometimes see a lighter margin around the lesion where it's growing into new tissue. When the lesions are very small, you often won't see that, um, that, that kind of concentric ring. So it can be difficult to, to distinguish from other diseases but it often does not have a purple margin, but uh, that is not, I've found that is not always a consistent way to distinguish um, this, this disease. Here's the, the next uh, leaf you just see, depending on cultivar, it can have slight impacts on the way the disease looks, but um, these concentric rings later on are, are, are a good point to look for. On some cultures, as I mentioned, you can see something of a purple um, halo around that, that lesion under some circumstances. So it's uh, something to, 
to be aware of. And, and it can get confusing, as I showed you earlier, this leaf that has a cercospora leaf spot, but then actually all of these uh, other small lesions here, when this, this sample was diagnosed, the smaller lesions here were small target spot lesions. So just uh, be careful of making assumptions about what, what the small lesions might be in your fields. Some important points to note about target spot to help you distinguish it from some of the other diseases is, is that it's often not associated with nutrient deficiencies. Actually, it's the other way around where you have rank, dense growth, that's where you'll have target spot development. And it also develops usually from the bottom of the plant up and the in, inner parts of the plant. So those are the le leaves with the first lesions to develop. And so that's in contrast to what I told you earlier about the leaf spot complex, which can develop actually throughout the, the canopy or even in the upper parts of the canopy. For a useful guide to diagnosis and management of foliar diseases, I would refer you to an extension bulletin that was put together by Cotton Incorporated and several extension specialists from cotton producing states. And it goes over several of the most common and important diseases. It also includes a key to differentiating different uh, spots in cotton fields based on the pattern of the spot on the, on the leaf and also certain characteristics of those lesions and where they occur on the plant and other conditions that occur with them, whether they occur with nutrient deficiency or stress or not. And this, uh, I think, can be helpful in guiding you in, in diagnosing what some of your uh, diseases are in your fields. One of the reasons why you need to be concerned about managing your foliar diseases is that they can cause premature defoliation. And in this example here, uh, target spot caused by Cornespera cassiocula, it, it can produce a toxin in these leaves which causes them to senesce off the plant. Uh, even at a stage where there are relatively uh, few lesions or the lesions don't take up that much area of the leaf, uh, but that premature defoliation is worse typically in, I would say, high yield potential cotton, so where there is uh, adequate rainfall or irrigation, and then high inputs like high nitrogen where you have a high yield goal, um, and that can potentially lead to dense canopies, which is ideal conditions for target spot. To investigate the best ways to manage target spot, we have been running field trials for the last few years. Some of the objectives were to determine the effects of canopy management on target spot and to look at the efficacy and, and optimal timing for fungicide applications because we know onset of disease is very important to yield to determining whether it will have a yield impact. For this project, we used two cotton varieties, Phytogen 490, which is susceptible to target spot, and Delta Pine 1646, which is more resistant to target spot. We had two different canopy management treatments using Mepquat chloride or PICS. We considered one low standard uh, with eight ounces at pinhead square and 10 ounces per acre three weeks later. And then a more aggressive treatment, which was eight ounces at pinhead square and 10, 10 ounces two weeks later, 12 ounces two weeks later, and 16 ounces two weeks later. So this, those treatments would vary depending on your particular production environment. For the three fungicide treatments, we, we used Preaxor for all of them. And they were a non-treated control, one treatment where there was a, a single application when lesions first appeared, and then a third treatment where there were two applications, the first spray at first lesions and the second spray two weeks later. So looking at the defoliation, the premature defoliation on October 5th, the end of the season, you can see the difference between the two varieties, 1646 and Phytogen 490. And then Phytogen 490 is more susceptible when you look at the non-treated control relative to the 1646. And that the, the fungicide treatments did have a significant effect. So uh, one treatment significantly reduced that defoliation, two treatments uh, did better than the one treatment for phytogen 490. We could not distinguish between the, the two uh, treatments or the one treatment for, for those that were applied to 1646. It's just a, another way to look at it. When you look at that 
what we call area under defoliation progress curve or when you accumulate that defoliation over time you can see the same pattern except that it's a bit more obvious that 1646 was was uh, less susceptible than phytogen 490 and we could see the difference between the two sprays although there wasn't a great difference and we could not distinguish the difference uh, when we looked at the two sprays versus one spray on 1646 but overall uh, there was no significant impact of growth regulator on reducing defoliation. That was another important finding. What we found in terms of overall seed cotton yield was that 1646 out yielded phytogen 490 significantly. And then when we look at the effect of different fungicide timings, you can see that for 1646, either one or two applications significantly prevented yield loss by about 500 pounds per acre. Then when we look at phytogen 490, you can see that either one or two applications both increased or prevented yield loss uh, due to target spot, but two applications did better than one application, which was better than no applications at all. So from this, we can see that there's a significant difference in the response to target spot of different varieties that we know have different susceptibilities to this disease and that the timing and choice of one or two applications of fungicide should probably depend on the environment and also the variety that you're growing. What's important to, when you're thinking about target spot management is to think about in the context of cotton development. So this figure here, it shows uh, numbers of various plant parts per acre and on the x-axis here shows days after planting. So here you can see that the plants are developing, they start to form squares, those turn into bowls, and those eventually become open bowls. So this is just a way to give an overview of the, the whole season. So what matters is when disease develops. And what we know or have seen mostly is that we only really see target spot developing after canopy closure. So the, the probability of target spot developing goes up later in the season. But the, the contribution of the late season leaves to, to yield actually may not be very high. So that's important to keep in mind. And there actually there's some, there's some useful information that, that uh, people have, have uh, developed or identified the contribution uh, that the main stem leaf or the subtending leaf has towards various plant parts, so large square, small bowl, medium bowl, and where they're getting their food from, basically. So at the stage of a large square or small bowl, the main stem leaf is a, is a major source, and uh, then that declines as the bowl develops. So going from medium to large bowl, the main stem leaves are, are a declining source of food. Whereas the subtending leaf at small bowl stage is a, is a, so, is a major source, as well as at medium bowl, and then at large bowl, that becomes a declining source again. So what this means is that uh, basically the most critical time for economic return on your fungicide applications is this mid-season time here between the first and the fifth week of bloom, where most of your yield is being determined by the contribution of those leaves on your main stem and the subtending leaves in the lower canopy, which can be affected by target spot. As you move towards the end of the season, uh, those leaves being lost may not have a great impact on yield. And with that, I would like to acknowledge the team that I work with that have helped contribute to the, the field studies and also provide my contact information in case you would like to reach out to me for, for more, more information. And I would like to acknowledge Cotton Incorporated for funding that contributed to the, the field research that I presented. I hope that you have learned something about distinguishing the different cotton diseases, particularly the, the most common ones that we see here in, in North Florida, and then also uh, a bit about target spot and its management. And with that, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to me or contact your local uh, UF Extension agent.